So you've started working with Salesforce and need to understand sandboxes. Well, congratulations. Sandbox will soon become a core part of the development process working with Salesforce. And it's important you understand how they are used early on in your career. A Salesforce sandbox is an environment that allows you to test new configurations, code and automation outside of your production, which is your live Salesforce environment. It's like a replica of your production instance with some or all of your metadata and data, depending on your sandbox type. Hey, I'm Ben McCarthy, founder of Salesforce Ben and after watching this video you'll be an expert in everything sandboxes. I'd also like to give a shout out to Tom Bassett who is the original author of this article at salesforceben.com which you can find in the comments below. Before we jump in there will be some jargon we start to use so I'll quickly give you a rundown on their definitions. First up metadata. This is your Salesforce configuration data such as fields, page layouts, profiles and automations like flow. Data storage. This relates to how much space there is for Salesforce records such as accounts and contacts. File storage defines how many files, e.g. documents and images, can be stored in Salesforce. Sandbox type, which relates to the different sandbox options, which have different data storage and refresh options. And sandbox template, which defines which Salesforce records are copied into the new sandbox. So why do you need a Salesforce sandbox? It's considered best practice to configure and test in a sandbox prior to making any live changes. This ensures that any development doesn't disrupt your live environment and isn't rolled out before it's been thoroughly tested. The data that is available to you will depend on the sandbox type. There are multiple different types and each has different considerations. Some sandbox types support or require a sandbox template. Let's have a look at each of them. There are four types of sandboxes, each with its own set of characteristics that make it fit for a specific purpose. Each sandbox type has a few different variables to consider. How often you can refresh a sandbox to mirror your production instance, how much information you can store across data storage and file storage, whether just metadata or data is copied over, and which Salesforce additions include which sandbox types. First up, we have the most basic sandbox called developer. This is a small storage limit of 200 megabytes for file and data and does not copy any data such as accounts over to your sandbox. It also has a refresh interval of one day. Next up, Developer Pro. This is almost identical to the developer, but has one gigabyte of storage each for file and data. Developer Pro sandboxes are only included with unlimited and performance editions of Salesforce, but can be purchased separately. Thirdly, we get a bit more serious. The Partial Copy Sandbox has data storage of five gigs and file storage the same as production. However, it does allow you to create a sandbox template where you can define a portion of your Salesforce records that it brings over once it's been refreshed. This has a higher refresh interval at five days. Partial copy sandboxes are included with enterprise unlimited and performance editions of Salesforce and can also be purchased separately. Lastly, we have full copy. And as the name suggests, this gives you the same data and file storage as production and is essentially an exact replica of your production org. This has a refresh interval of 29 days and these sandboxes are only included with unlimited and performance editions of Salesforce but can be purchased separately. So how would you go about creating a sandbox? Luckily, it's pretty straightforward. From Salesforce setup, search for sandbox boxes, then select new sandbox. Define a name and a description and select the sandbox type. Set the sandbox template where applicable and optionally choose to run some scripts that will run after creation, for example, to create some test data. Once you are done, select create to start the process. The length of time it takes to spin up a new sandbox can be anywhere from a few minutes for developer sandboxes to 24 hours or more for full copy. This will depend on the amount of data and metadata that is being copied over. When a sandbox is created, every user will have .invalid added to their email, apart from you, and .sandbox name added to their username. For example, mine would be ben at email.com.dev for a sandbox called dev. To log into a sandbox, use test.salesforce.com instead of login.salesforce.com. Passwords will be copied from production, but be sure to make the email address valid in case a user needs to reset a password. Refreshing a sandbox. Let's say you created the sandbox a while ago and it's now out of date when compared to your production. To ensure your sandbox provides an up-to-date snapshot of the live system, you'll need to refresh the sandbox. Refreshing will wipe, which means delete, all data and metadata from the sandbox as it copies the latest configuration from production. Only refresh if you are happy for any changes in your sandbox to be overwritten and check with your team as well, as once you have refreshed the sandbox, they may be gone forever. From Salesforce setup, use the quick find to search for sandboxes. Next to the name of the sandbox, click refresh and then get started and follow the wizard. You'll only be able to refresh a sandbox if it's available for a refresh. Once a sandbox has been refreshed, if you didn't select it to auto activate, you'll get an email when it's ready. 
Once you have created and fully tested your changes in the sandbox, it's time to deploy. This can be a very straightforward process with a small Salesforce org using change sets that allow you to deploy from sandbox to production. However, in larger Salesforce orgs, there are more considerations to take into account, such as how many technical Salesforce professionals are in your team to ensure you don't overwrite each other's changes. This is where you can use one of a few options, such as the Salesforce DevOps Center, third-party DevOps tools, or the Salesforce DX experience. It's also important to note that there is a fifth type of sandbox that isn't really a sandbox called scratch orgs. These are a fundamental way of combining a blank Salesforce org with a DevOps process. We have multiple videos on our YouTube channel regarding Salesforce DevOps and the DevOps Center. Check them out to be completely upskilled on deploying your changes safely.